Sometimes I will look at pictures of myself before I got sick. And I said to my mom the other day, I just turned 27 and I'm going to be 40. And I just thought, my God, how did this happen? I got sick and um, I felt like my whole life was ahead of me. And now I feel like a lot of, a lot of it's behind me. I just missed a big chunk and, I, and I'm not any closer to being better. I'm way worse. I put like smiley faces straight or sad to see, to dictate how I was feeling in the, just on the calendar. There's lots of sads. <laughs> But this is 2009, I was actually, I was a lot better then. The A's are acupunctures, which I did a lot back then. As horrible as I thought it was at the time, I didn't know it could get so much worse. And I specifically would say to my mom, thank God, at least I'm not in pain. And then the migraines kind of came out of left field. As the days went on, I just felt worse and worse. I was so dizzy. And I thought I had a sinus infection, so I went to the doctor, they gave me antibiotics. I, I took them, didn't feel better. I think I took like three to four rounds of antibiotics and a round of prednisone. Prior to mid-November, I was working out twice a day. Running, I wasn't like laying in bed depressed. And within three weeks, I, I was having breathing issues. I couldn't stand in the shower. I mean, I tried going for walks. I couldn't do it. I was so dizzy, I, I didn't even feel like I should be driving. I never got better from that point on. It'll be 12 years ago in mid-November. MECFS stands for myalgic encephalomyelitis slash chronic fatigue syndrome. And this is a debilitating multi-system illness that reduces people's ability to function normally. And um, if they try to do more, they have an escalation of symptoms that include pain, cognitive impairment, um, inability to stand up without feeling faint or having symptoms. The difficult thing about living with MECFS is the uh, significant limitation in the ability to function normally, both physically and cognitively. Um, and people want to do things. They want to be productive. They want to work. They want to go to school. They want to go to the store. But depending on the severity of illness, um, activity is severely limited by these symptoms. And the more people try to do more, the worse their symptoms become. So very few people are able to sustain a full-time uh, job in the, in the workplace, for example. I don't publicly tell people I have this. I mean, I like, you know, my close friends and whatever, but I can't handle the like, oh, you have what? Oh, why don't you go for a walk? It's not something that you can say like, yeah, I have this illness and people go, oh, okay. So. All right, I'll, uh... It's very hard to understand uh, the disease. On a, a good day, and they're very seldom, but on a good day, you would never know she has it. She can be up for an hour or two, perfectly normal, looks like the picture of health. People will say, you know, I, oh, I saw Shannon. She looked wonderful. Yeah, thanks. Okay, yeah, you know, you don't want to confront them and say, well, you should see her the majority of the time. Um, it, it just would make everybody put in an awkward position. If she's got a doctor's appointment, she knows she'll pay the price the next day. There are many holidays we've missed. She almost never leaves the house because she can't. Um, she sleeps. There are days I go by the door and wonder, is she, is she alive okay. or not? You go by the door and you just... Almost cry. It almost never goes away for a day or two, but it's like degrees. There are days she has migraines, excruciating pain that'll wake you out of a sleep. She can't sleep for days at a time. 
you know, we try everything Dr. Papernak comes up with. He's got stuff that works for some people, but not her. It's our job to look at the whole picture and try to put all the pieces together. If you look at a patient with ME-CFS, they've been to multiple doctors and probably taken about 10 doctors before they actually get a diagnosis, and it can take them five, six, seven years before somebody actually sits down and listens, puts the pieces together and say, you know what, I think maybe this is what you have. So if you listen to the patient, the patient will give you the diagnosis. The lack of interest in the medical community has also led to the lack of interest in doing research, which then led to the lack of information produced in order to show us that there is actual disease process going on. What we need is more research, better research, and coming up with a valid etiology for the illness, which would then hopefully lead to a more productive tool to treat the illness. Modern biomedical science uh, has been enormously successful because we try to take things apart. The problem is that uh, now we have all these parts, but we don't know how they connect to each other. But the biological systems are holistic systems. They work together in a concert. How do they link to each other? How do they function as a unit? And how do they talk to each other? The reason MECFS is so difficult to pinpoint is because uh, we don't know what we don't know. There's uh, something going on with the immune system. There are people who become sick after a viral infection. There are people who develop ME-CFS after a Lyme infection. Uh, so th there could be different types of triggers that uh, almost causes the immune system to fall off the cliff and it just cannot get back to its steady state. Uh, the bacteria that live in us shapes the immune system. Uh, it educates it so that it can recognize it as part of the self. Uh, but occasionally uh, this goes awry and uh, the immune system responds to our microbiome unnecessarily or is stimulated by it and that causes inflammatory conditions and so on. We still don't understand how that crosstalk happens, how do they influence each other. Well, I'm very hopeful for the future. I think it's not an intractable problem. It's a matter of doing really high quality research and collecting um, sufficient data sets that are reproducible. And importantly, try to really stratify the patients as well, that we don't consider that everyone has the same exact condition. Um, the clinical symptoms might look very similar, but the triggers could be different or the exact mechanisms could be different. We have a, a research path that if we invested time and the effort, we will figure this out. What we learn from this disease will benefit many other chronic conditions as well. We need a cure for this disease so that people can have a life. Uh, it really does rob the people of their life for some people, like my daughter, it's kind of all-encompassing their life. If I have anger about this, and I don't really, I think it's just sadness and it's loss. In a way, I feel like my life ended when I got sick. It's kind of like I died when I was 27. I've just been hanging out in this body since, <laughs> but not truly like participating in life. Uh, there are some people that their whole life is just nothing but agony, uh, and it runs the whole scale. Um, just because you don't see them doesn't mean they don't exist.